Now we probably have time just for one question um, and I'm going to pose this and ask whether Alba, Mihaela or Kaisa would like to reply. Um, it's a scenarios question really. If the farms with which we worked were located in protected areas and you used the land, the agricultural management practice that were valid for those areas, how would you go about doing that? Could, could we assess the significance and the benefits of protected areas by using the tools we have tested and applied. Would anyone like to reply to that? It's a, it's a good question, but in our case study we didn't work with this kind of protected areas. So we couldn't compare uh, if the practice, how how is the management of this practice in, in these protected areas. I can jump into that into the discussion. Uh, in our case study, um, almost uh, all farms were from the protected areas. So, um, uh, yeah, I think that uh, I would like to, to mention that uh, um, it was uh, very interesting the uh, uh, differences between the between the organic farms and between the conventional farms rather than um, the farms uh, inside the, of the protected areas in our case study for instance because um, what i observed is that uh, the organic farms and transition farms are more open to uh, dealing with the biodiversity issues or with the ecological uh, issues and uh, they are not focused just on the economic uh, uh, part of the of the um, uh, let's say farming system and they are not so business approach but uh, they they also want to um, to take into account also um, the 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 nature in in their business so um yeah i i think that in our case uh most of the farmers um are um implementing uh, sustainable practices in a way like i mentioned before uh the agroecological practices um are um perform better in uh, this uh, biodiversity level uh, but it was this uh, uh, this mindset uh, very uh, let's say different in terms of the type of the farms more than the the farms inside uh, protected areas mm -hmm. Kaisa, would you like to add anything? Well, I can just shortly add that um, we also don't have any farms in protected areas per se, but we do have a lot of the farms that manage uh, semi-natural pastures mm -hmm. that are uh, subject to a lot of specific rules and regulation in terms of management. So it's a kind of quasi uh, protected area, um, I guess. And what we have been able to see in the assessments is that they do have a very significant um, impact on a lot of the environmental indicators. Um, um, and we also know from previous uh, research and experiences that they are very important for biodiversity, uh, both at farm level and landscape level. Um, but uh, yeah, we haven't made a comparison based on that either in our case. Okay, and I might just add that in the Scottish case, most of the lowland areas in our case study are nitrate vulnerable zone designations. And so what it does give an opportunity to do, which we have not done in a formal fashion, but also explored with actors, is if that the constraints associated with NVZs was removed, what might that mean? Um, so in the dialogue about controls and constraints, how might new practices be considered alongside the existing constraints? I think at that point we should pause because it's almost uh, five o'clock. Everybody is now welcome to move back to the plenary to hear about what's going to happen tomorrow. So I think with that, we'll say thanks very much to Alba, Mihela and Kaisa. Also to Mara, uh, who's been monitoring the chat and communicating with individuals. And thanks to all of you for joining in this session this afternoon. And with that, goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.